Hey, check it out, folks. One of the things that I love to focus on whenever I sit down and provide education, both monetarily mindset, as well as structure and balance on how to really create the life that you deserve. I once in a while share a little bit about my journey. And one of those journeys is I haven't had a drink since July 1996. And we're going to play in that space today. But if you want to talk about the rehab journey, which gave birth and also the connection of you and Lynn mm -hmm. um, on how that became a rocket ship and the love of a, I'm not saying dad, but I'm talking about the love of a, a, a mother, a no nonsense mother from what I'm starting to understand. Mm -hmm. Not like one that was just letting you get away with shit to a son and how it's created this, this right. unbelievable thing that's happening right now. Absolutely. So like where we left off, basically, yeah. you know, I went from doing that quarter pill to doing 30 Oxycontins a day. <sighs> and that was in a matter of a month and a half. That fast. Huh? That fast. Um, and uh, I could do it. I had it on me. That's why I was able to do it. Wow. Failed out of college. Um, I, I got caught on the way back home from college. I had to pick up my sister or drop her off at the mall. Got pulled over. Had about 200 Oxycontin in my back seat. A list of people who owe me money and about $10,000 in cash. So, so consequences, it was pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Consequences are now starting to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got so it. that got real, real quick. Got but it. the thing was, is that Oxycontin was such a hot thing for the cops. It was easy to get out of it. Got it. You know, because all I, at that time, I had to tell on a couple of the doctors that I was using. Yes. Set them up in stings and I got out of it. So. Yeah, but still not real reality for you no. because because daniel was of age at, at 18 19 mm. the police didn't have to report back to his family that he had been arrested oh. so he comes back from being arrested he's in jail for two hours whatever comes out sits down while his mom's like cooking dinner and she, just even go, know. she has no idea that's an unbelievable perspective that that you just threw in there because mm -hmm. at the end of the day he came home for dinner and everything mm -hmm. was the same everything's fine and she doesn't know what's happening yeah behind the scenes and the only reason that that came up was we had a family member that was a dispatcher for the police and they brought it up i think he called my dad or something and he's like you know dan was arrested the other day and so my dad approached me he's like were you arrested yesterday and then i had my mom come in the room and she's like you were right you know I, i'm like oh how am i gonna get out of this so you said, oh, you, said <laughs> so you told your dad no but you told your mom yes the second she came yeah, in it, yeah, it, yeah it, it, it was it was you know and i'm like how do i lie how do i get out of this that's when the world started really caving in yeah. there's like now my lies are getting exposed like the, the web is so large at this point that like there's no way to stop this. Your no mom was fact. like the Fed. She started paying attention. She started yes, looking at the phone, exactly. tapping the phone lines, yes. checking out the oh, bank records, through all my watching the money. Yeah. The whole nine yards. Um, and they started like, we need to get him help. Like, yeah. this is not good. And it was a, like literally a matter of like four weeks, uh, like three weeks or something like that. Like from the time they figured out I got arrested to, you know, you need to go to rehab. And he's he's 18 at this point. Is that is that the age when all this started happening? 18, 19? Yeah, yeah, it was 18, Before 19. Before 21? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So how many rehabs? Uh, so the first one, I, you know, I convinced my parents that I was cured in two yeah, weeks. Um, because that's how long that's it takes to cure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had no intention of being sober. Um, you learn new language. Yes, you learn a new you language. Said, so you, get, you got honest about uh, a couple of things. Yeah. You just gave them like the top level stuff. I think, it, it, you know, it's funny how addiction, it just builds an ego that you believe your own lies. Mm -hmm. Like, so I... I really sold the lie of like, I'm cured and I'm ready to ma make this good because honestly I believed it, yeah. but I knew deep down inside, like you're playing the game right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And um, came back home two, three days, right back to it. Yeah. Um, and uh, my mom caught me again th at this point because everybody knows my game. I don't have any mon money. I'm not drug dealing or anything mm. anymore. So now, now it's stealing, right? So. It. Now I'm stealing copper pipes out of things. I'm not, that's worth copper's worth money, folks. I'm knocking on doors and collecting donations for something that doesn't exist. You know, I, I do a whole nine, whatever I could oh, to get yeah. the dollar just to get my high for the day. Um, and at, at one point, my mom was washing something in the sink. She took off her wedding ring or one of the rings, and um, I took it. I mm. went to go hawk it. Um, I got to the pawn store and I couldn't sell it Thank when God. I got there. Yeah. And I put it back in my car, went back home, stole something else, went back to the store. Eventually, I came back from getting high, um, and my mom was waiting for me in the driveway. And she's a, she's just like, you're not my son. Mm. You're not my son. And what did that feel like? Uh, that hurt to the core. Um, 
but at the same time you you're that ego the addictive ego is there and it won't let you feel anything how are you getting along with your sisters at that point Oh, my sisters are are to. a mess. My my one sister just started college, um, so she's left out. My little sister's in middle school. Who loves you? Who loves me? Everything and looks do. up to me. I'm no. like you know the super superhero brother. You know I was no. a popular kid, so they would come with me to the cool parties and all that kind of stuff. So, you know they looked up to me, and um, you know she's just like what is going on you know my parents are fighting they don't know what to do with me so yeah. family life at home when i'm not there is tragic you yeah. know um and uh my grandmother was at the house at this time she gave me a good slap and um i literally just looked in her face i'm like see you and i packed the bag i had a dog at the time because my mom bought me a dog to uh, a sober dog. take care of, yeah sober dog <laughs> companion um and i'm like i'm taking my dog with me you know like <laughs> And I literally walk down the street, up a block to my dealer's house. Mm-hmm. And um, I, he wouldn't let me sleep inside the house. Yeah. Where I had to sleep in the van not, in the driveway. They're, they're real, you know, they're good and, for their customers. And in, at this sick they're, part, they're really good fulfillment yeah. packages, yeah. right? They make you feel really accepted. And the sick part is that, like, you become so resourceful. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. That, like, I'm already conveying in my head, like, okay, so we got, like, $300 in the bank account. Um, we got our dog. I can do this tomorrow. And, like, well, that will stretch me to this. Like, so you're doing all these calculations already not going why the hell am i in this van right now mm. like it's not even going through your head yeah. you know yeah. so my parents uh they end up getting an interventionist that like flies out from texas to scoop me up and take me away yeah. um and honestly i was defeated at this point it was like the next day i ran out of drugs the 300 dollars didn't do what i thought yeah. it was gonna do um and uh i i was just like okay I'm, i'll go back to treatment um and that's where they looked into a place in california no no Dorn, if, let me just check real quick so for all the folks that are out there just keep in mind when you're in an addiction and your mind is doing what daniel just described and it's plotting it's scheming but it's always thinking that same mind when you get sober translates very well in business hmm. because at the end of the day the 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 recovering alcoholic and addict they're not in business per se to make money even though that's a byproduct they're in it for the process they're in it for the action steps they're in it to see the result of what they're building but staying in the moment on a day-to-day basis so whenever somebody's in in a world of one day at a time they know how to apply that to business in a way that's pretty significant from an acceleration standpoint the trick is can they survive the success that's a whole nother conversation right. however um it, it, you know intuitive into to the mind of of where you've been where you are now and mm-hmm. where you're going um that always translates it, that's 100%. been my attention you know you know from what i've seen certain people right. but now you you've got you've gone to a couple rehabs so you must have picked up some information you know how rehabs work at this point because right. i went to rehab in uh 95 and they said to me, I'll never forget. I was like, yeah, I'm leaving. And then they're like, oh, no, no, you, you got to go to a meeting every day. I was like, what? Yeah. I thought like I left and that, that was it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. meeting every day. What are you talking about? I'm good. You yeah. know, so I, I totally get that. But now you're learning a little bit about rehabs. You know how to talk. And and in the rehab, they call you out on your BS, yeah, blah, blah, blah. They bring the moms, dads, you know girlfriends. You the right things to say. To yeah. Kind of yeah, that's the danger. Yep. Mm-hmm. But you had, had you hit rock bottom at this point? It should have been. Okay. So, <laughs> it should so, have been. Okay, got uh, it. But it wasn't. Um, and this this rehab, I, I, I really did I put my all into it. Like, so you opened up. Time. Yeah, yeah I, I, I opened up. I, I did, completed the 30 days. Um, completed 30 days of um, like extended care, like IOP after that. Got yep. a sober living out so there. So you, you, you were in the mood. I, I, I did. I got a sponsor. Went through the 12 steps. Awesome. Was speaking at meetings, the whole, the whole so thing. I did that my first time before I got sober. Yeah. I lasted nine months. It, yeah, it didn't yeah. last that long for me. Yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't even, yeah. you know, I started cheating, you know, and then eventually, yeah. Yeah. And and then, you know, things started falling into place for me. I got a job. I loved California. Got like an apartment. Um, All those kind of things started falling in, into place for me. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, I was with people at treatment um, that like we stayed together and got jobs together and all that kind of stuff. Oh. Um. But I'm still gravitating towards the people. That was your people. circle? What? That was your circle? That was my circle. I mean, pretty much the whole town was people that were in recovery because there's multiple treatment centers there. Yep. Um, 
which had a great recovery community for people that were serious. Um, but I was still, I didn't get those underlying issues cured yet. Got it. You know, it was, I was white knuckling it. I was putting a bandaid on something like, like an infested wound. Right. Yep. So, um, I, I'm still gravitating towards the wrong people. And, uh, one of them brought home bath salts one day and it wasn't even question. Let's got do it. bath salts, um, which is insane, but got addicted to bath salts. Start doing methamphetamine, crystal meth at this point. Okay. Um, so it's a new, there's a new territory. New territory. Got it. And then I, I fell in love with Now, were you, meth. in your mind, a loser? I'm, I suck. I quit. This is it. I'm just going to fucking die. Was that kind of where you were at? Yeah. That's yeah. that's what it came to. Yeah. So, so what happens is when we get a brain full of recovery and we even experience some sober time, if we go, if we quote unquote relapse, I don't even know what bath salts is, but we're going to talk about that in a second. But it led to whatever the next step was. We then feel brain full of recovery, a belly full of booze or drugs really mm -hmm. makes us the recovery. You know, we feel like losers. And now everything we thought bad about ourselves is now manifesting itself mm -hmm. in such an accelerated way that we are on a crash course to either death or jail. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I mean, you have to understand at this point, Dan really has no contact. Like he's once he starts falling back into that old behavior There's he no has net. no contact with his family he's yeah. completely cut himself off from them so you so, haven't been talking to mom and dad at this point sisters and brothers no, no. Okay. i cut off everybody because once i made the you know decision that so you're on deaths this is what i'm doing i'm like if i cut them off they won't hurt anymore Got you it. know okay um because and my parents did visit me while i was out there and like they were on like they knew I wasn't well, you know what I this mean? This is before like, you relapsed or you uh, on this the is path right of in relapse? the, like the process of it. Got like, it. Literally. I, I think I relapsed that week. Got um, it. Okay. but that, um, yeah. So, so what happens is we relapsed before we relapsed. So there must've been signs. I'm sure your mom was able to feel that there was certain things happening even before you relapsed. That she could tell based yeah, on behavior. She could talk to me on the phone. And yeah, exactly. Got it. Tone of my voice, what's going on. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and, and, you know, that gives your family PTSD. Yes, you know it what does. I mean? Because they have to be hyper vigilant all the time to yes, it does. keep you alive. So, yes, it does. you know, um, you know I'm destroying my parents and, and, and my family, my sister. You know, she's going through her own mental yeah. health issues now because of this. Um, and, uh, I'm off to the races and I mean, crystal meth brought me to my knees and it brought me to my knees very quickly. I mean, it brought me to the lowest of low as life can go, okay. you know, homeless, living in abandoned buildings, just mm. psychotic and psychosis and during seeing, that, hallucinating uh, during, the whole nine yards. Yeah. During that time, what was like going on? Like, were mm. you like, how do well, I get I out of on, this? I was on a mission like, to die, to be honest with got you. It. I, I, I was... Whenever it takes me, it takes me, and I'm just gonna do as much drugs until that happens. So when did God intervene? Uh, well, uh, God didn't intervene. In, well, I guess He spoke through my mother. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, and I have to kind of like wind back. A lot of the issues and why I wasn't getting to these underlying causes in, yeah. in my addiction was, you know, I had a very um, I didn't connect to the 12 steps very well. You know, I went to Catholic school. I had this this chip on my shoulder about religion in general. Mm. And it reminded me a lot of like religious studies. Mm. And so I wasn't listening. It didn't fit my ideologies. But continually over and over again, I was told this is the only way to recover. Yeah. So if you don't if you don't fit in this little box here, you're going to die. Yeah. And that didn't jive with me. And not my I, I'm a very um, you know, I mean, you get the addictive ego, but at yeah. the same time, I, I am very innovative, creative kind of person, and I don't like to form fit myself to a certain box. I, yeah. I like to, to build it myself, right? So I kept hitting this door, the, this wall throughout all these treatment stays and everything that it only brought me to a certain point, Got and it. that's why. I can never get to that deeper level. So, you know, I, I, I fall down again, end up in the mess with, with crystal meth. Were you yeah. hallucinating? Hold on. Yeah. Now you're on crystal meth. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. Was this going to sound crazy? But was there any clarity moments of higher power in those hallucination moments that you took with you after you got sober that helped you on the CFC journey? I, I, honestly, my life was was nuts. Got it. it. It was. There was no. I didn't know what day it was. I didn't know what week it. it was. I, I, might, I mean, re reality completely went away. I, I, I did not living hell. 
I did not know what, what, what was up and what was down. I, you know, I, I mean, on Crystal Matt, the longest time I stayed awake was 11 days straight. Oh, my God. Did not God. sleep for 11 days. So you can imagine wow. the psychosis and the oh. hallucinations that were going on at that time. I weighed... My my uh, I weighed about ninety six pounds going into my last treatment center. So, so when mom saw you, she hadn't seen you in a while. Did she even recognize who you no, were? No, she knew I was I was a train wreck. I actually came home for a court case because I had a little business in between all this somewhere. Um, <laughs> you had a business in the middle of this. I did. I had a clean up I, because I was stealing copper, so I had a clean up business that I would scrap every. <laughs> and it was a big thing. But anyway, I got I got in a fight with a guy. I painted his whole house. He didn't pay me, so I had a court case <laughs> still <laughs> open from that. So I. I had to come back to New Jersey for that court case, and I I came I was detoxing from meth, so literally I was uh. sleeping. I came home and I slept. I was in the middle of court, drooling on myself because not, not that I was high, it was because I was coming high. down. Yeah. And um, I uh, my mom knew like it's this is not good. She didn't want to send me back to California, but she did. Um, and I I think I hacked into her online bank account. That sent myself money. I uh, had an ounce of methamphetamine waiting for me when I got back. Oh my god! Um, got high off the races. She at this point wanted to come. She's like, I need to get him. He's gonna kill himself. Yeah. And uh, so she knew I was running with a girl at the time, and um, she contacted that mother on Facebook and was like, Can we go out there and intervene both of them at the same time? Because I don't know if you know one's gonna go and one's not gonna go, and you know then they'll both stay. That kind of thing. Um, so, but that mom wanted nothing to do with my mom, but said she was going to go out there. So my mom flew to Palm Springs, California, and she literally hid at the airport inside a bush waiting for this mom to arrive wow. because Christine, the girl that I was with, she, her mom kind of was an enabler. She would, you know, send us money and that kind of stuff all the time. So my mom knew that Christine would probably pick up her, mo her mother. Got it. So, so she didn't know where you were. She had no idea where Got I was. It. You know, yeah, she yeah. just flew to the town that I was in. But I, I mean, at this point, I'm homeless. I'm just running around, yeah. you know, crazy. Uh, and uh, so my mom, literally, she saw the, the, the car pull up, the mom come out, and she jumped in the front seat and said, you're taking me to my son right now. Like, hijacked the car. Like, wow. you know, carjacked her. <laughs> um, the only guy from one of my family is my mother. That's she what is. I always say. Yeah, no, uh, that, but that, think about, like, how brave that, like, that's, that's incredible. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. not... That's like outside of like any kind of normal. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's definitely terrifying. You have your, she's there by herself. My yeah. father-in-law isn't there with her. She has no idea where Daniel is. And she had never met this mother before. She only knew the telltale signs was because unfortunately at the time she was ill with cancer. So yeah. she was looking for someone who was on chemo. Got so it. she could have jumped into anyone's car. And yeah. you're, you're talking about like a young woman who like is in an airport and just Getting into anyone's co like how dangerous that is, and she yeah. just doesn't care. She's on a mission to yeah. save her son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a that motherly instinct that kicks, yeah. kicks yeah. in. You do anything. Yeah, and um, so Christine drives my mom to the abandoned hotel that we're living in. Um, and when I say abandoned, I mean it's literally dirt floors mm -hmm. and like a couple homeless people make you pay a couple bucks to, you know, hide out in one of the rooms. You know. Um, and uh, so my mom figures out what door we are in and she like kicks the door in. And I thought it was the cops. Honestly, I was like, oh, you know, oh, no, <laughs> you know, and I froze and I had the belt, the needle in hand. And um, all I could see was this silhouette because it's dark inside. There's no lights. It's abandoned. And uh, I see this figure standing there and I hear my mother's voice. And it was that was the most surreal moment. Uh, I, like it was like I regressed to a four-year-old state of mind. Wow! And uh, she said, "Come on, Dan, we're gonna get you help." And the most calm voice ever for how chaotic this scene actually is. Wow! And I follow her. Like, did you no hesitation? No hesitation. It was just like you were ready. Uh, put the needle down. Like there was no Christine conversation. Got you my just, shoes and, yeah. and, and 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 walked out to the car, and. Um, on the car ride back, it changed, you know. Um, then uh, I regressed to that four-year-old seat, followed her, got back in the car about halfway back home. I started becoming Daniel, Daniel, you know, and, and the drugs were like, 
you can't you can't leave you know behind a, in your mind you're like oh i left that there i left that there they're gonna take that from me like you know you start yeah. doing all that um so i got back to the house and she's telling me I, you're gonna get on a plane you're gonna come to new jersey and we're gonna get you better like she had the full intention like she's gonna just lock me inside in the attic somewhere and yeah. like you know she's gonna do whatever she needs to do to get me sober and um, i'm like the hell i am and yeah. i start freaking out and i mean physically violently freaking out there's two guys at the house that she brought me to they're trying to rest me to i'm throwing them through them through like, was it a like coffee a halfway, table was it a halfway house kind of thing no, it, was it, was just... a, it was a friend a mutual a friend that i met out there Got that it. was helping my mother find me basically but he had no idea what he was stepping into or he kind of he had no idea that I don't no one thought that that Got was going to happen. Okay. I mean, I'm not a violent person. Yeah. So for like that to be happen, nobody saw that coming. Yeah. Um, but the drugs did yeah. they bring you to that point. Um, they had to call the cops. The cops came. I, I fought with the cops. I punched one in the face. Donkey kicked another one. They ended up having to taser me three times. Um, fell down, peed myself, uh, hit myself on a um, a fireplace and I have a scar here from it yeah. um, and uh, was literally put in a straight jacket and sent to the psych ward from there and mm -hmm. I became 5150 which means you are now the property of the state of California and lose all your rights mm. and you're on a psychiatric hold mm -hmm. so and uh, that that was um, that whole experience was insane um yeah. the cops never searched me so i ended up having a bunch of drugs in my pocket so i got to the padded room at the hospital snorted about three grams of bath salts um so i was still out of my mind and uh the first couple days i tried to escape um the psychiatric ward <laughs> several times and they tackle me out of van in the butt, you know, mm. wake up in a room like and do it all over again. It was like Grandpa died, like just doing like that's what it felt like to me. And my mom, uh, she came to visit me or I think I called you on. Uh, I, I called her on I don't know, was it day three or day two or something like that. Um, and I, I screamed at her like, why did, why did you do this to me? Why didn't you just leave me there? I just wanted to die. Yeah. You know, just leave me, you know, that kind of thing. Hang up the phone, try to run out of the place. Yeah. And um, by day three, uh, or day three or day four, um, she came in to visit me. And I uh, I literally crawled in her lap and I cried mm -hmm. like, like a little baby. I was, I was broken. You know, I finally came down and could think like a human being again yeah. and um i'm just like i don't i don't know i don't know how to fix this yeah but yeah. i'll give it one last shot and as a mother i mean you're imagining like your son is not typically a violent person like yeah. to, so to watch that scene where he's fighting with police officers and becoming like like spitting and throwing his blood and just being so out of control and then not even being able to because now he's a product of the state so she has to get permission from a judge in order to see him so she has no access to her son she can't mm. she came all the way out here to help him and now she it's out of her hands again yeah. like there's there's no way for her to control it yeah so to have your son in that to finally have him come back to you yeah. and and have that vulnerability was such a a turning point for the two of them because yeah. they knew that you yeah. know there was there was a chance and my mom what she had to go through this entire time because the the hospital that i got stuck in was in cora yeah. palm springs is about like a three and a half hour drive to there right so she had to rent the car because she didn't prepare for any of this to yep. happen i was supposed to go home with her and of course they give her the brightest red dodge challenger to drive <laughs> so she just wants to hide yeah. you know yeah. and now she's driving this big giant muscle red car <laughs> and she's going down the pacific coast highway three and a half hours with all this beauty and like yeah. it, it's uh for her to go through that and experience that and meanwhile my dad's at home waiting for a phone call knowing his wife is in distress Uncertainty. So it, it's, yeah. it's it's extreme the amount of pain that everybody goes and the through. whole family and and when folks we talk about and believe me the the story is just beginning. Um, I'm, I'm blocking off time for this because I want you to be able to kind of really follow the path. Um, at the end of the day, you're talking about, you know, multiple rehabs, homeless, drug addiction on the highest level, uh, 27 friends from high school that eventually have passed away, um, brought up in a, in a family where, you know, addiction is, it doesn't discriminate, knocking on death's door, but then he gets sober. And that's not enough because in order for us to stay sober, we need to help other people. And the magic of CS, 
CFC, mm-hmm. sorry about that. The magic of CFC is what we're going to talk about right now because I find it, first of all, this is one of the greatest stories so far. <laughs> but now, like, how does it go? All right, now I'm sober. What do I do next? Right. Like, that's amazing. Alyssa becomes part of the next chapter of the story. Um, you know, being married, raising a family, and and I'm assuming with the rehab centers that you guys have, the challenges that maybe you had learned while you were going to rehab, you guys have cures for for mm-hmm. people when they come to your rehabs. Is that mm-hmm. is there a system that we're going to kind of get into that separates what you guys do? Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that adds a little bit more, and I'm so excited 100%. to hear about yeah. that. Um, really, I yeah. mean, this is an amazing. Just amazing Thank journey. Thank you for sharing it. Absolutely. And it, so, so you it, get sober. Yeah, I right? get sober. Like, I, mean, I go to my last treatment center, and this one was very different. My grandpa just happened to see it on a commercial. That's why I ended up there, honestly. Oh, that, so this was a different was by, type of rehab already? By, by chance. Got it. And, um, okay. Tell me. Th- this was a very different treatment center because it was non-denominative. So, Talk to me like I'm two. Yeah, two so years old. Non-denominative, meaning like it didn't have a set uh, recovery plan for you. It okay. basically get, served you an a la carte menu of different ways that you could be over different philosophies different ideologies really and you pick and choose what works for you that's not in the big book folks this yeah. is a whole different animal that we're about to step uh, into yeah. Go ahead. so they had a lot of experimental therapies there i mean i was given like a spiritual guru his name was aka he was a man um <laughs> he had dreadlocks down to the floor and like totally my vibe and uh he uh you well, know he didn't we like smoke weed though right like he no, was a spiritual yeah just a spiritual it. guide for me and um he uh you know, we we I, it just spoke to me. I'm like, oh my god, this 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 works. You know, I can. It's not about fitting in this box anymore. Mm. Now it's my box. Now I can make it how I want to be comfortable in it. Got it. And I was like, I could do this. Yeah, this is amazing. And and it was 28 days of like that breakdown, the build back up, and I was on fire. Honestly, I was like, this is amazing. Was the break just? I'm curious, selfishly, was the breakdown more like traditional, like how they, you know demand the truth and all that or was it was it more of a different type of style of breakdown uh it it was a different the breakdown came from the epiphanies throughout the time right so like because at this place i got nine different therapists that all had different uh different modalities that they they were strong in so they would pick me from all these different angles and and i'll I'll shout out noah rothschild he he um noah rothschild he he was my inner child therapist (laughs) he was my inner child therapist and um he unlocked a lot of epiphanies in me just going rolling back that snowball effect of irrational belief systems proper right? questions what why it? it all happened Got it. where did the the thinking stem from and why do i feel like i can't get out of it, Got it. um and once i had the answer to that all of a sudden oh my god i have a solution mm. right so i unraveled that ball of yarn and it, it was only because there was multiple people looking at me different angles and they're all talking to each other so they pick more out of me yeah. so it was a very intensive 28 days mm. it, was, it was it was amazing amazing program and um I was on fire, but as soon as I went to the discharge planner, and I think my mom called in, they gave me my discharge file, and they go, "Here you go, Dan. This is this is your treatment plan for after you leave here." I open it up, all excited, like, "What am I gonna do when I go home?" And it said, "Go to ninety meetings in ninety days, twelve that's, steps." That's all that was available in New Jersey <laughs> because that's how all that was available. Wow. And I and I broke down. I was scared. I like I went right re- regressed right back to that. It was like what I really the rehab said. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Where's Noah? We just, yeah, we just did this whole thing. Yeah. Right. Where's, yeah. Where's well, the other I'm on guy? fire. A- Akma? Where's the other Aka. guy? Where's Where? Noah and Akka yeah, in yeah, New Jersey? Where, exactly. Yeah. So, um, in CFC. My, my, my mom said, you know what, Dan? Don't. We're going to figure it out. So, um, okay. She's not here. So, here's my question mm-hmm. Did she now put on like a business hat? A process? No. Did she put something on? Not yet. Her job wasn't though. Not yet. It was no longer. I'm assuming now it was no longer good enough that you got out of a rehab because she's seen that movie before, Mm -hmm. right? Right. So now she must be saying there's something else we need to do. Oh yeah. And was that because you were telling her about what was going on during your 28 days mm-hmm. yep. that was different from the other rehabs and she she kind of heard something different she i was talking to her she was also she was talking to my therapist and i you know okay. she was talking with no so she got and, some insight yeah mm-hmm. okay so it, she knew we, she was asking me I, I mean we talked pretty much uh, 
pretty often. Almost like but she knew this didn't happen in New yeah. Jersey, though. That's the key here. What so she knew that this didn't exist in New Jersey. We, we figured that out quickly. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we were like, we're, we're going to create it as best we can when we come back to New Jersey. So that was so a deal. We did. Got it. Okay. So we came back and we made a, a treatment program that kind of mimicked what I was doing there. Were you going to meetings during that time, though? No. Okay, so you just were right into. No. She's, Let me she's create the solution. Literally pulling the book out and running one meeting with just Daniel. She's running that meeting. They're wow. figuring it out together. Yeah. Um, and wow. doing whatever holistic wellness that would fit within what maybe they did at this treatment center. So if she can find an acupuncturist, but the right acupuncturist, one that's not medical, but more like on a holistic side. Uh, and that was really hard 11 years ago. Of course it was. But if there's anything about my mother-in-law is that she's innovative and she's going to find a solution. And if she can't find a solution, she's going to make the solution. Was there like phone calls every day to all different type of doctors and how to find the right oh, one yeah. and how to get it? Mm -hmm. Oh, we tried. We searched all over the place. And I did mean, they think you were crazy? It, it, like, were Can you... we get insurances coverage? Like we, we were budgeting and trying to figure out how, how we make it affordable. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to, you can't cash pay for everything. You know, you know my dad would probably have a heart attack if I did that to him. <laughs> yeah, so. So, okay, let me just, yeah. so, so this is really important, folks, because, um, you know, when you're dealing with insurance carriers, you're dealing with business, you're dealing with mental health or, you know, any, anything in the health space, it's not easy. No. Insurance companies don't like to pay. No. They're, they're, they have attorneys to show them how not to pay, mm -hmm. right? right? So now a traditional recovery is 90 days, 90 meetings, get a sponsor, uh, get a home group and make sure you're either, you know, making coffee or cleaning up the ashtrays at the mm -hmm. home group, right? Right. And Daniel said that that just, it didn't fit his version of a higher, we're talking about a higher power now. And it didn't fit his version of a higher power. So as a result of it, what, you know, really it was a block for him, but at some point his mom understood this as well. But to come back home, and we're talking about disruption, we're talking about innovation, constant never ending improvement, creating something new out of different elements or ingredients that exist. This is not an easy thing. And this is this is like a yeoman's job of of unbelievable work, and uh, I wasn't familiar with that side of it, you know, yeah. even coming into today. So so now, every day she's like giving you a meeting based on what you learned at the rehab, but you're also galvanizing doctors and professionals that sit and fit with whatever this type of recovery is. Yeah. Remember, the goal is not to drink a drug one day at a time. Yeah. Right. Right. That's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And you showed for the first time based on anything that's existed since the 70s, which is when I think rehabs first started, that mm -hmm. there is something different and it works. Mm -hmm. Right. And wow. you gotta understand, I, I took the drugs away, right? And I'm working on myself, I'm healing. I'm, I am getting better and more confident, but at the same time, all those things that I ran away from in middle school came back, right? So I became that more. shy kid, right? Again, I, I didn't know how to like get outside myself. I wasn't confident, right? So like I, I, I needed someone behind me driving me forward and yeah. pushing me into the uncomfortable right yeah. it, i was scared to change again right yeah. so i need i needed someone and that was my mother for me she yeah. was my sponsor of change i guess yeah. <laughs> you know and um you know Amazing. i mean it got to the point like i mean and, and we got in like the the groove of it like making a schedule and it was really hard at first because i don't have a job or anything so i'm like literally folding socks at 9 a.m on wednesday mm -hmm. you know yeah. that was my schedule mm -hmm. you know and um <laughs> and then uh she went to my my sister's back to school uh in uh september and uh there was a guy talking about um drugs and alcohol and his story and she's like my son would love to tell his story to him you know yeah, yeah. and then she came home and she's like dan guess what you gotta call this guy he you, you gotta go tell your story to him and i'm like no no like i'm not, I'm not doing that why would you make me do that yeah, like i don't yeah. want to do that and i'm like i knew she was gonna be mad at me if i didn't call so i called he didn't answer i'm like yes he did call and then he called me back at 11 p.m. Don't know yeah. why he called me at that time. And I was like, I'll answer it. Answered it. He's like, yeah, awesome. You start next week. Come to uh, Jackson Township High School. So this is when you You're started, telling your story. I'm this like, is when you started giving back. Uh, yeah, this is the Got start it. of it. But I was scared. But he didn't, yeah, it's not yeah. like yeah. he knew. No, no, you don't know it when you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, it's no, only after no, when you get I, the dopamine hit after no. you speak. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. had to, I had to read my whole entire story off a piece of paper. I'm yeah. shaking like a leaf. It was so hard the first time I did that. It was so hard. Yeah. yeah. But I had, I remember I had three students come up at, to me afterwards and they're like, my brother is, yep. my sister is, my mom is. It's the magic. And they're like, I just want to tell you your story inspired me. I'm like, you couldn't believe I it. can have an impact on other people's mm -hmm. lives, yeah. mm -hmm. you yeah. know? And that was like, high power. Okay. Habits. Like, 
let's change some lives like yeah. that that felt good you know um and i got better at telling my story i went to every single high school and middle school on the hey, face of this fo- planet folks um he wasn't getting paid for this to be no. clear Mm-mm. so the fulfillment when you remove money i always say if there was no money what would i be doing i'd be doing this mm-hmm. right so if there's no money the fulfillment of sharing a story creating inspiration and showing people that hey i could be homeless and then create a life that i design uh, that's real, and that touches people more than any other story about somebody saying, hey, yeah, you know, I started a company, I sold it for $100 million. Interesting, but once you become more interested than, you know, interested in someone else than people being interested in you, that's when you begin to evolve and really elevate and mm-hmm. sharing your story, your experience, strength, and hope yep. um, is really what it's all about. And somewhere along the line, the magic of Alyssa came in here as we mm-hmm. launched into uh, your recovery. If we can go mm-hmm. from telling stories to the schools, you and mom building out the model, yeah. and then how you guys met. I'd love mm-hmm. to be able to kind of yeah. get into that bridge. Yeah, absolutely. So from the middle schools, my friends started seeing, like all my friends from high school, they yeah. were they all fell down. So they started seeing me doing really well. How are you, how are you doing that? So yeah. um, we were like, oh, there's a lot of people that wow. need to learn that there's a different way than just the 12 steps that yeah. are out there. And they need a place to go. Whether you do 12 steps, not do 12 steps, it doesn't really matter what you do yeah. as long as you want it. You could be here. And that's where CFC was born. Mm-hmm. It literally, True. was born at my kitchen table with you know, two the, other friends. Uh, and- let me say something, and I'm going to insult some people, and I apologize if your feelings are hurt. If your significant funny bone gets hit right now, I'm just giving you the message because I'm going to tell you my story. He just said something. He said that no matter what, if the desire to not drink is great or drug is greater than the desire to drink or drug, that's the baseline. Now, the 12 steps is a tool on how to kind of make it more systematized and structured. But with Daniel saying, and I offer this to you, that your higher power doesn't have to be this box that is created by somebody that's either sponsoring you that may know how to not drink or not drug, but not be an expert in this other mental health professional stuff. So at the end of the day, what Daniel just said is so powerful that if you have a desire to stay sober, that's what it's all about. Anyway, tell me more, brother. Yeah, so I'm you know, that's where CFC got born. Um, and um, the name CFC came from coming full circle. And mm. I got that from speaking, being able to speak to others and be on the other side of the table and bring good to the world instead of chaos. Um, and uh, that with the name was born and the organization was born. And it started in our basement. I started a smart recovery meeting. Um, and we do activities on the weekend. And as we got more people in and- Is it like members kind of? Is it, is it like a- yeah, yeah, so you become a member. It was like a gym membership. Yeah, kinda, it was like you know. family members though. That's what yeah. it really was. That's what it was supposed to be. What? The word member. Uh, it's not like a membership. It was yeah. supposed to be family members because it was just- Community? Yeah, it was yeah. just someone's mom and a son. And then the, fa- the family ah. members come and so, then they start getting their plans. So they and don't. Then, so you guys don't separate the alcoholic to the non-alcoholic inside of the nope. family. Hmm. Al-Anon versus or a community. You yep. have a wow. Because mm-hmm. sometimes the wife or husband feels left out. Right. Yep. No, we right? try to do everything. No, and we don't well. let secrets exist. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like if you feel a certain way, be honest. Like yeah. it's okay. Don't be scared how you feel. Right. Yeah. So. That allows a lot of healing because there's no one, there's no one, yeah, there's yeah. no shadow to hide in. We're, we're, we're here, we're all working together and we're, we're working to, towards a common goal. Let's put it all on the table. And 10, 11 years later, how many, how many people are part of the family? Um, so we've, we've helped over 20,000 families in, oh my God. in our area, uh, which is Jersey? huge. Yeah. In New Jersey. Um, but also all over we've, you know, we've done interventions internationally. Um, we do get phone calls for people out of state. So um, we've impacted quite a few quite a few people and and we know all of their stories we know all of them I want to thank you both so much for being on the show thank you appreciate it thank you thank you so much